Most people are not living their dreams because of fear, ladies and gentlemen. Fear is the most subtle and destructive of all human diseases. Fear kills dreams. Fear kills hope. Fear put people in the hospital. Fear can age you. Fear, ladies and gentlemen, can hold you back from doing something that you know within yourself that you are capable of doing, but it will paralyze you. And I ask you a question, what is the benefit? What's the benefit of allowing fear to hold you back? What's the benefit of giving up on yourself, of not stepping out on life and taking life on? What is the benefit for you? What's the plus in that? Every great soul of man has had its vision and pondered it until the passion to make the dream come true has dominated his life. You will be what you will to be. Let failure find its false content in that poor world environment. But spirit scorns it and is free. The human will, that force unseen, the offspring of a deathless soul, can you away to any goal, though walls of granite intervene. Whatever an individual or a people concentrates upon, it tends to get, because concentration is just as much of a force as is electricity. The youth who concentrates upon law, thinks law, dreams law, reads everything he can get a hold of relating to law, steals into courts, listens to trials at every chance he gets, is sure to become a lawyer. It is the same with any other vocational art, medicine, engineering, literature, music, any of the arts or sciences. Those who concentrate upon an idea, who continue to visualize their dreams, to nurse them, who never lose sight of their goal, no matter how dark or forbidding the way, get what they concentrate on. You've got to ask yourself, how long am I going to allow this to hold me back? You cannot let your fear hold you. You have to feel the fear and do it anyway. Do it broke, do it scared, do it nervous, do it trembling, do it on your knees, do it with help, do it on crutches, do it in a wheelchair because you don't want to end up in a nursing home sitting on a bedpan wondering what would have happened if you'd only had more courage. You don't want to end up in an old folks home and your dying thought is, I wish I had a. You don't have as many opportunities in life to take that gamble and allow life to play you. You must play life. If you can concentrate your thought and hold it persistently, work with it along the line of your greatest ambition, nothing can keep you from its realization. But spasmodic concentration, spasmodic enthusiasm, however intense, will peter out. Dreaming without effort will only waste your power. It is holding your vision together with persistent, concentrated endeavor on the material plane that wins. There are thousands of devices in the patent office in Washington which have never been of any use to the world, simply because the inventors did not cling to their visions long enough to materialize it in perfection. They became discouraged. They ceased their efforts. They let their visions fade, and so became demagnetized and lost the power to realize them. Other inventors have taken up many such near successes, added the missing links in their completion, and have made them real successes. You've got to make some conscious effort to begin to work to develop you. Start listening to tapes on a daily basis to begin to recondition your mind, to retrain your thinking. Listen to things that can empower you, that can enable you to create a new reality for yourself and a new life for yourself. You might appear to be strange around most people. Don't expect it to make sense to anybody why you've got to do this, why you have got to go. Why? I don't understand. You don't have to. I'm going for me. This is something I have got to do. Everywhere there are disappointed men and women who have soured on life because they could not get what they longed for. A musical or art education, the necessary training for authorship, for law or medicine, for engineering, or for some other vocation to which they felt they had been called. They are struggling along in an uncongenial environment, railing at the fate which has robbed them of their own. They feel that life has cheated them, when the truth is, they have cheated themselves. They never got the spindle and distaff ready that would have drawn them to the flax for the spinning of a happy and complete life web. They did not insistently and persistently send out their desires and longings. 
They did not nurse them and positively refused to give them up. Above all, they did not put forth their best efforts for their realization. Now, will it be turbulent? Yes. Will it be easy? No. Will you have some opposition? Yes. Will I make a lot of mistakes? Yes. Will I get hurt? Yes. But guess what? There's no gain without pain. How do you stand the race less when you lost your money, lost your car, had no place to stay, sleeping in people's houses, on the floor, on their couch? How do you handle the times when you're borrowing money and couldn't pay it back? You felt humiliated when people you love who didn't believe in you told you you ain't nothing. How do you keep on coming back again and again? Three things we must do to make our dreams come true. Visualize our desire. Concentrate on our vision. Work to bring it into the actual. The implements necessary for this are inside of us, not outside. No matter what the accidents of birth or fortune, there is only one force by which we can fashion our life material, mind. The bee and the snake draw material from the same plant. One transmutes it into deadly poison, the other into delicious honey. The power that changes the stuff into new substance is within the bee and the snake. Of two boys or two girls in the same wretched environment, one picks up an education, trains him or herself for place and power, while the other grows up a nobody. It is all in the boy or the girl. Each has similar material to work in. One transmutes it into gold, the other into lead. When they've hit rock bottom, hit the bottom of the barrel, they had nothing left. Everyone's given up on them. They're dead broke on their back. They're just now left with the intestinal fortitude, the pride within. Do I want to stay on the bottom of this barrel or do I climb the f*** out of this hole? It's at that point when everything's lost that everything can be gained. You've got to remind yourself, I know i got what it takes to do this. And it's necessary that you go at it with everything in you, pulling deep down within, challenging yourself. You must go through those ends. Hit rock bottom. Your worst hour of despair becomes your best as you get back up. You learn from that. And you continue to put one foot in front of the other. Because what you're going for is what you believe. The power that makes our desire our vision. Our reality is not in our environment or in any condition outside of us. It is within us. There is some unseen, unknown, magnetic force developed by a long continued concentration of the mind upon the cherished desire that draws to itself the reality which matches the desire. We cannot tell just what this force is that brings out the thing we long for out of the cosmic ether and objectifies it, shapes it to correspond with our longing. We only know that it exists 